Welcome to this lecture about fetal biometry or fetal measurements. Fetal biometry means the measurement of the anatomic segments of the fetus by ultrasound. In the first trimester, the measurements most commonly used are mean gestational sac diameter and crown rump length. Beginning at 13 to 14 weeks of gestation, the biparietal diameter, the head circumference, the abdominal circumference, and femur length should be measured. These are three images showing crown rump length measurement. Which one of this measurement is correct? Actually, none of them is correct. You will know the reason why these measurements are incorrect throughout the lecture. Let's start with the mean sac diameter. This parameter is useful in the early stages of pregnancy, when the fetal pole or the embryo is still not identifiable on ultrasound. This can be as early as five weeks by transvaginal examination and six weeks by transabdominal exam. How to measure mean sac diameter? Obtain a longitudinal and transverse views of the gestational sac. On the longitudinal image, Measure the length and height of the gestational sac. Only measure the anechoic area excluding the echogenic rim around. On transverse image, measure the width of gestational sac. Remember only measuring the anechoic area excluding the echogenic rim. Add the dimensions length, width and height and divide by 3, you will get the mean sac diameter. What if your ultrasound machine gives you that mean sac diameter is out of range? Then you should use this formula. Mean sac diameter in millimeter plus 30 is equal to gestational age in days. An example as you can see in this case, the mean sac diameter is about 9 millimeters and ultrasound machine showing that it is out of range. So the gestational age in days is measured as following. 9 plus 30 equals 39, which is the gestational age in days. This means that gestational age is about 5 weeks and 4 days. Crown rump length. The first trimester crown rump length is the most accurate method to determine gestational age, and once established should not be changed. The crown rump length is defined as the longest embryo length, excluding the limbs and yolk sac. It is the measurement between the top of the head to the distal sacral area. The optimum measurement time is between weeks 8 and 12, when crown rump length is above 10 mm, because the slope of the embryonic growth curve is small before this time, and it can be difficult to clearly identify a very early fetus. The measurement used for dating should be the mean of three discrete crown rump length measurements when possible. The accuracy of this measurement for determining gestational age is within three to five days. How to measure the crown rump length? Obtain a mid-sagittal section of the fetus. The fetus should be horizontal at 90 degrees to the angle of insonation. The fetus should be in a neutral position, not hyperextended or flexed. The image should fill at least 30% of the monitor screen. Place the intersection of the calipers on the outer borders of the head and rump. The maximum length from cranium to caudal rump is measured as a straight line. As you can see in this diagram, the intersection of the calipers should be placed on the outer borders of the head and rump. Placing the calipers on the inner borders or on the borders is incorrect and should be avoided. This is an example of correct method for measuring crown rump length. As you can see, this is a mid-sagittal section of the fetus. The fetus is in horizontal and neutral position. There is good magnification, so you can clearly see the ends of the fetus and the calipers are correctly placed. So this is accurate estimation of the crown rump length. Another example here for estimation of crown rump length. You can see in this image, 
the section is not mid-sagittal and magnification is poor. So, this is incorrect estimation of crown rump length and should be avoided. A second example of incorrect estimation of crown rump length. The section here is not mid-sagittal and the fetus is flexed, not in a neutral position, leading to underestimation of crown rump length. Last example of incorrect estimation of crown rump length. The section here is not mid-sagittal. You can see the spine in the middle, this is a coronal section. The correct crown rump length is measured in sagittal section, not in coronal one. Head measurements includes biparietal diameter and head circumference. Biparietal diameter was the first ultrasound parameter used to determine gestational age and assess fetal growth. The optimum time for measuring this diameter is between gestation weeks 12 and 24. Biparietal diameter is the widest axial dimension of the skull, measured from the outer edge of the proximal parietal bone to the outer edge of the distal parietal bone. The anatomic reference points are the thalami and the cavum septum pellicidum. How to obtain ideal image for measurement of biparietal diameter? Get a cross-sectional view of the fetal head at the level of the thalami. The head should be as close as possible to the horizontal. The head should appear as oval shape. There should be symmetry at both sides. The falx cerebri should be centrally positioned, appearing as continuous midline echo. The midline echo is broken anteriorly at one-third of its length by the cavum septum pellicidum. The thalami should be located symmetrically on each side of the midline. The cross-section of the fetal head should fill at least 30% of the monitor. The intersection of the calipers should be placed on the outer border of the parietal bones, outer to outer at the widest part of the skull. It is important to note that different countries use different biparietal diameter measurement standards. In some countries, biparietal diameter is measured at the widest part of the fetal skull from the outer edge of the proximal parietal bone to the inner edge of the distal parietal bone, outer to inner. While in other countries, biparietal diameter is measured at the widest part of the fetal skull from the outer edge of the proximal parietal bone to the outer edge of the distal parietal bone, outer to outer. The variability in biparietal diameter is about 1 to 1.5 weeks and subsequently increased to 3 to 4 weeks. The precision tolerance of biparietal diameter decreases during the third trimester of pregnancy. This is an example of correct estimation of biparietal diameter. As you can see, the image is well magnified. The head is horizontal. It is oval in shape and symmetrical. The landmarks are seen clearly. The falx cerebri is centrally positioned and appears as continuous midline echo. The midline echo is broken anteriorly at one-third of its length by the cavum septum pellicidum. The thalami are located symmetrically on each side of the midline. The calipers are placed so that the intersection of the calipers is on the outer border of the bones, outer to outer. This is an example of incorrect measurement of biparietal diameter. As you can see, the wings of the sphenoid bone and cerebral peduncles are visualized. This section is too low in the fetal head, leading to incorrect estimation of the biparietal diameter. Head circumference is the outer perimeter of the skull. It is measured using the ellipse facility of ultrasound equipment at the same level as biparietal diameter. Using the ellipse facility, place the line of the ellipse on the outer border of the skull to obtain head circumference. Head circumference is less affected than biparietal diameter by head shape variations and the presentation of the fetus. 
So head circumference is preferred as a more valuable measurement in assessing gestational age. Femur length. All the fetal long bones can be adequately examined and measured by ultrasound. However, the femur is the largest of the long bones, least movable, and easiest to image. This measurement is as accurate as the biparietal diameter in the prediction of gestational age. It is useful in confirming the gestational age estimated from biparietal diameter or head circumference measurements. It can often be obtained when fetal position prevents measurement of the diameter or head circumference. Measurement of femur length should not replace that of biparietal diameter or head circumference as the sole predictor of gestational age. The femur can be measured from 12 weeks to term. It has been identified that the accuracy of femur length in the predictions of gestational age is 2.8 weeks. With increasing gestational age, the accuracy of femur length decreases. How to measure femur length? Obtain longitudinal view of the femur closest to the probe. The endpoints of the femur are easy to define when the femur lies at a slight angle, 5 to 15 degrees to the horizontal. The full length of the bone is visualized. The bone should not be obscured by shadowing from adjacent bony parts. Magnify the image. The cross-section of the femur should fill at least 30% of the monitor. The intersection of the calipers is placed on the outer borders of the edges of the femur bone, outer to outer. The trochanter should not be measured. In the second trimester only the ossified diaphysis of the femur can be demonstrated. In the third trimester the greater trochanter and distal ossification center can be seen, and this allows one to orientate the section plane better. The greater trochanter should be avoided in measuring the femur length, as this results in an incorrect excessive measurement. This is an example of incorrect measurement of femur length. As you can see, the two edges of the femur are not clear. The main reason for this is poor magnification, leading to incorrect estimation of femur length. Another example here of incorrect estimation of femur length. As you can see, the femur is in oblique position. In addition, the magnification is also poor, leading to unclear visualization of the bony ends and subsequent incorrect measurement. You should remember that the greater trochanter should be avoided in measuring the femur length. As this results in an overestimation of the femur length and subsequent gestational age. So, remember that. The femur can be easily recognized between 14 weeks and term gestation. The femur should be horizontal as possible. Measure the bone closest to the probe. See the full length of the bone. The bone should not be obscured by shadows. Magnification is important. Correct caliper placement is essential. And lastly, do not include greater trochanter in measurement. Abdominal circumference. Abdominal circumference should not be used at all to determine gestational age. However, it is one of the key dimensions to assess intrauterine growth restriction and fetal macrosomia. It is measured by the ellipse facility of ultrasound equipment, with the stomach bubble, and a short segment of the umbilical vein at the level of the portal sinus are visible. How to measure abdominal circumference? Obtain a transverse section of the fetal abdomen, as close as possible to circular. The umbilical vein should be in its anterior third. The stomach bubble should be visible. The kidneys and bladder should not be visible. The fetal spine are best positioned at 3 or 9 o'clock. 
magnify so that the cross-section of the fetal abdomen should fill at least 30% of the monitor screen. Ensure not to distort the circular shape of the fetal abdomen by applying too much pressure with the transducer. Using the ellipse facility, place the line of the ellipse on the outer border of the abdominal skin. This is an example of correct measurement of abdominal circumference. The image is well magnified. The section is circular. The landmarks are seen. Short segment of umbilical vein in the anterior third. Stomach bubble is visible. Spine at 3 o'clock. The bladder, kidneys and heart are not visible. And the ellipse calipers are well placed on the outer skin surface. This is an example of incorrect measurement of abdominal circumference. As you can see here, the entire intraabdominal umbilical vein is demonstrated. This means that the plane is too angled, leading to incorrect estimation of abdominal circumference. Another example here. The umbilical vein is not in the anterior third. Also not a short segment. Like in the previous example, the plane is too angled. Also, the stomach is not clearly visible. So, this is incorrect image to measure abdominal circumference. Last case. As you can see, the magnification is very poor. The umbilical vein may be correct, but is not visible as the image is too small. So, this is incorrect image to obtain abdominal circumference. So, to remember, in abdominal circumference measurement, obtain section as circular as possible. Short umbilical vein in anterior third. Stomach bubble should be seen. Kidneys, bladder and heart should not be visible. Magnification is important and correct caliper placement is essential. Thank you very much for your attention.